Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to this Jewish person complaint to the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, by One Islam Productions. As I said previously, in order for me to truly understand what Islam is, I will have to understand who Prophet Muhammad was. Therefore, I'm very excited about today's video. With no further ado, Let's have a look. And the blowing of the trumpet is mentioned 10 times in the Quran explicitly and over a dozen a hadith mentioned the concept of it as well very explicitly. Of them is the famous hadith Muttafaq Ali Bukhari and Muslim, the highest level of authenticity uh, in which uh, Abu Huraira narrated that, that one day uh, a Jewish person was uh, selling, was selling um, a, a piece of merchandise and a Muslim uh, man purchased it from him but he gave him a, a smaller price he's trying to negotiate he gave him a smaller price so uh, the Jewish man said لا ولد اصطفى موسى على البشر no way I'm gonna sell this to you for this price and I swear the, the qasam by the one who chose and preferred Musa over all of mankind He's making a qasam. There is no way this sale is going to go forth. You know, I'm not going to be skanked here. You're going to pay me more than this. So when he said, I swear by the one who chose Musa over all of mankind, one of the Ansar stood up and slapped him across the face and mm. said, how dare you say the one who chose Musa over mankind and the Prophet is alive amongst us. You should have said what? The one who chose the process, that's what he's trying to say. How dare you say this? Okay. Um, so this, uh, this Ansari, I'm sorry, this Jewish person went straight to the Prophet and said, Ya Abal Qasim, because the Jews would address him with his kunya. Ya Abal Qasim, I what am a person mean? who has protection and honor from you. I have dhimma, I have ahd. In other words, I'm a citizen. That's our language. I'm a citizen. How can I be slapped by one of the people here? Notice he is complaining directly to the Prophet ﷺ, how can you do this? So the man, so the Prophet ﷺ said, why did he slap your face? So the man was called and he explained, he's trying to defend himself. Ya Rasulullah, he said this and I defended and what not. So the Prophet ﷺ became angry until the redness was clear in his, this hadith is Bukhari Muslim by the way, it's not some obscure book. This is in our most important traditions. His face became red and okay. He said, لا تفضل بين أولياء الله or in one version, بين أنبياء الله Do not have this argument who is better than each other between the Anbiya of Allah. Don't go down this route. Do not go down this route of each prophet is better than the other. Don't do this. Because when the trumpet will be blown, فَيُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ He's now, this is the whole reason I'm bringing this hadith is this one. When the trumpet will be blown, and all who are in the heavens and earth will fall down unconscious. The Prophet is reciting a verse in the Quran. Uh, this is in the Quran. So he's saying this phrase, which we're going to mention later on. And then it will be blown again. And I will be the first to raise my head. I'll be the first to come out of the grave. And I will see Musa already holding on to one of the stools or one of the pillars of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I do not know. I do not know. Was the first time that he fainted enough that he doesn't have to faint again? Or did I actually resurrect? Was I resurrected before him or was he resurrected before me? Now the point of, the point of this hadith is very deep. Uh, you understand why I mention it. He mentions the phrase trumpet being blown. That's why you mention it. But the hadith is very interesting. So remember Musa fainted in this world. When he asked to see Allah, he fell down. We will learn today's lecture and also next inshallah Wednesday's lecture that the Quran mentions that when the trumpet is blown, all who are in the heavens and earth will fall unconscious in a faint. Right? Uh, so, Sa'iqa man fi samawati wal ard. Sa'iqa means to lose consciousness. And 
فخر موسى صعقة. The same word is used for Musa. Musa fell صعق. The Prophet is saying, when I get out of the قبر and I think I'm the first person, I will see Musa ahead of me. I will see Musa already in sajda, holding on to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, he's telling the Muslim, you do not know who is better. Even though we know who is better, which is another point by the way, right? I should mention this later on. Let me finish this hadith. Yeah, but that's exactly what I mentioned as well in the previous video where I said, why do Muslims always glorify Muhammad to such an extent? Why is he the best of creations? And you can find it here in the hadith. Apparently, I haven't read it myself, that there is no distinction to be made between prophets. And the same is being found as well within the Quran. The Quran clearly states that there is no distinction between the prophets and that we should focus upon God. This is true Truly the beautiful message that I got when I was reading the Quran by myself because you have to understand I'm coming from Christianity. Christianity does what? Christianity worships Jesus. Jesus is this sin-free being, but moreover, he's not just a separate being. No, he is the second personage. He is actually God. This is their claim. They are worshiping Jesus. And in order to worship Jesus, they have to claim that Jesus is God because otherwise they would be polytheists. And now when I'm looking at certain Muslims, not all, you see this indirect worship of Muhammad. With all due respect, guys, please understand what I'm saying here. I know that Muslims will claim that worship is only to God, obviously. However, there are different kinds of worship. We can say that we are believers, but if we are on our phone all day long, we are worshiping that phone, even though we're going to say that, no, 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 we are worshiping just God and not this phone. Indirectly, we are worshiping that phone. And the same applies to all kinds of other things. If we don't have our priorities straight and we focus on other worldly things and not on God, we are worshiping those things. I said it previously as well. The atheist, the materialist, they have no concept of worship. They're going to tell you that they are not in a religion and they do not worship anything. But of course, we know that they are worshiping science. Duh. So therefore, even in an atheistic, materialistic mind where somebody does not believe in God, or at least they're pretending not to believe in God, they are still indirectly worshiping something. And this is what was so beautiful and mind-blowing to me when I was reading the Quran, because the Quran clearly said that Muhammad was only a warner, only the messenger and not God, and that Muslims should not do the same to Muhammad that the Christians did to Jesus. This was the message of the Quran that I perceived. It was so amazing because it clearly redirected our focus away from people onto God. But nowadays, oftentimes, when I see descriptions of Prophet Muhammad, I see this indirect worship. Please let me know what you think. He is saying, he is right now, the Jewish person is here, the Muslim person is here. And he is saying something to make the both of them realize, especially the Muslim, because the Jewish man did not say anything wrong from his perspective. Whereas the Muslim man is getting angry. How dare you praise Musa? Smack! And the Prophet is so angry at the Muslim for his overzealousness that his face is bright red, which is a sign the Prophet would only get that angry very rarely. And he said, do not do this. Do not put us above the other. Then he said, when I get out of the Qabr, I will Amazing. see Musa ahead of me. His hand will be on the, the you know, the, the, every chair has, you know, the, the pegs. I was looking at the pegs. His hand will be on the peg of Allah's uh, throne. And I do not know. Was his first sa'iq, a cause for his exemption that he did not fall down in Sa'iq when the trumpet was blown? Or was he resurrected before me and he made his way there? I, w I don't know. But there is one blessing that he has that I don't have and that he's going to be already there. Okay, so that's the hadith. And from it we learn there is something called the trumpet being blown. In Sahih Muslim, we learn in a long hadith, the phrase that is, is, is uh, uh, what we need to know. In Sahih Muslim, we learn that the Prophet said, that the trumpet will be blown. And everyone who hears the trumpet, they will turn their head to the direction of the sound. And their heads will go towards that sound in an attempt to listen to the uh, trumpet. And the first person to hear it, 
This hadith in Sahih Muslim will be a man who is busy preparing water to feed his camel. You know, the, the, there's a trough of water, you put it for the camel. He's preparing his water to feed his camel and he will fall dead on top of that water and all the people will fall dead after him. So this is graphic, vivid detail. There's going to be a trumpet and the person, everybody's going to look, trying to find where's that noise coming from. And then the first person to hear is going to be this shepherd type of person and he will fall down. In another hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmed and other books, our Prophet ﷺ said, the day of judgment will not occur. Uh, sorry, the day of judgment will occur when two men will spread a garment in front of them, the buyer and the seller, but the trumpet will be blown before they can buy and sell, before the garment is picked up. Unexpected. And the, trump, the, the hour will not be established until a man has milked the she-camel and taken away the milk, but he will not be able to drink it. And the hour will be established when a man is repairing a tank for his, uh, again the water trough here, and his animal will not drink from it. Meaning he'll, he has it ready, but the animal will not drink from it. And the hour will be established when a person has raised a porcel of food to his mouth, and he will not be able to eat it. And this is referenced in the Quran, وَمَا أَمْرُ السَّاعَةِ إِلَّا كَلَمْحِ الْبَصَرِ the day of judgment is like the twinkling of an eye. It's going to come suddenly. And Allah says in the Quran, uh, It's going to come all of a sudden. There is no warning for the trumpet to come. I'm this is explicit in the Quran and the Sunnah. The first trumpet that will be blown, there is no warning signal. There's no test message. It's going to come so suddenly, the person has the merchandise, the buyer is bargaining, they're both going to die. And feeding the animal, both gonna die. Raising the food, raising the, the milk, both gonna die. Nobody's gonna get anything. That's how suddenly it is going to come. So, all of these evidences clearly demonstrate the blowing of a trumpet. Actual trumpet, a sound is gonna be heard. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. A little bit over the place here. It talked on the one hand about the prophets and how we shouldn't make distinctions between the prophets. And then on the other hand, it talked a little bit briefly about the trumpet and how it will be blown without us knowing. I personally would have liked this video to stay on one topic and explain this topic further, go into detail rather than scratch two surfaces. Nevertheless, as I said throughout the video, this is the beautiful message for me personally reading the course. Quran. This worship of Jesus idolizing a man was taken away from me through the Quran. And this is why out of a sudden I saw a whole new perspective, a true monotheism, concentrating only on God and not on people any longer. Of course, respect the messengers, but do not make distinctions between them. This is truly the message that I got from the Quran and was so powerful. But then watching certain YouTube videos, you see yet again this glorification and indirect worship of messengers, which I personally cannot resonate with. Of course, yet again, all due respect, we have to appreciate the message that came through those messengers, but not forget that we have to put our eyes straight onto the path of God. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Guys, on that note as well, please do me the favor. If there is anything you want me to react to, post it in the comment section and God willing, I will react to it soon. All right, guys, but this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.